Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Amen. He is a way maker. Amen. Chain breaker, right? Yes. Amen. Give the Lord another clap off yeah. while I'm getting ready. David said it's great and greatly to be praised, right? Yeah. It never gets old praising the Lord. It never gets old praising God. He is worthy of all of our praise. And, um, you know, to whom much, what does the scripture say? To whom much is forgiven, uh, they're, they're grateful more. The more you have forgiven, the more grateful you are. Well, some of us have been down the road ways, and God's brought us out of a mighty dark place, a mighty dark pit, and uh, we have a lot to be thankful for and praise Him for. So no, don't, don't, uh, don't uh, let our emotionalism mess you up or bother you if we get if our praise is emotional if our worship is emotional if our even if our preaching is emotional because you don't know where the lord brought us from and what god brought us out of and we know where we would be today if it wasn't for the lord and it certainly would not be in church on a saturday evening it wouldn't be in church on a saturday evening right there was there's other places we would we would be tonight uh, if we weren't in prison or if we weren't dead. But I'm thankful I'm in church tonight. Amen. I'm thankful that I am in Carruthersville. How did Pastor say How did Pastor say today? Uh, Missouri? 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 Missouri. Yeah, there it is. I thought it was always Missouri. I didn't know it was Missouri. But I found out today it's Missouri. Huh? It's Missouri. It's Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> it's Missouri. <laughs> but listen, I'm not going to argue with him because I'm not arguing with him because every time Bishop McCool says it, it's Missouri. So I'm, I'm, I, from now on, it's, I'm glad to be in Missouri. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm glad to be with you tonight. I'm glad to be with you tonight. I'm, I'm honored to be with you. Don't worry about who's not here. Don't worry about who's not here. We're glad you're here. Yes. We're glad the Amen. Lord is here. And uh, we're just going to hear what God has for us tonight. Amen. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else tonight. That's the truth. Because I believe we're in the will of God. And I believe God's got a word for us. Amen. So just if, you can, if you're able to stand with me one more time, do that. Let's go to the scripture in Matthew chapter 3. The praise team did a great job again. Thank you so much. Everyone that played and, 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 uh, and sang and the sign team did a tremendous job. Thank you so much uh, for doing that. That was a blessing to us, blessing to the Lord. Amen. Man, and I, and I did, I did spend some time with Pastor today, and uh, man, I got some stuff I need to work on for. Oh Lord. For Sister Becky, especially. My <laughs> goodness, uh, what in the world? <laughs> something about, and this, you know, something today about a casino and stuff like that. I don't know. I mean, it's like. I don't we even talked about hey, 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 you're not supposed to tell everything you know or don't know now. I'm trying to make her nervous. She gives me a hard time, so I'm trying to make her nervous and give her a hard time. Praise God. It's good to laugh in church. If we're not happy, man, we got a problem. We ought to be the joyous. Yeah. Most happy people on this planet. Amen. Yeah. Let's, start, let's, let's see what the Lord has for us today. Matthew chapter 3. Verse 11. Are you there? Say amen. Yeah. John the Baptist said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He, notice this, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That's the, the King James is not quite accurate in its translation of that. It does not, the and with should not be there. He shall baptize you with Holy Ghost fire. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost fire because they are inseparable. Hebrews chapter 12. If you'll turn there real quickly. Hebrews the 12th chapter. Hebrews the 12th 
12th chapter. I love the way the Passion puts Matthew 3.11. The Passion says that he will submerge you into union with the spirit of holiness and with a raging fire. That's, that's the true description of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. He's the spirit of holiness, and he certainly is a raging fire. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12. Are you all there? Say amen. amen. Verse 28. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Thank God for that. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Notice that, that we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Verse 29, read it with me, please. For our God is a Say that again. For our God is a The passion says, for our God is a holy, devouring fire. Say that with me. Our God is a holy, devouring fire. Oh, let's lift our hands again, our voices. Let's just ask God to speak to us, touch our hearts and our minds and our spirits tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord, speak to us, Lord, touch our hearts and our minds. In the name of Jesus, awaken us, Lord Jesus, to hear what you have for us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Give us an understanding heart that we may understand the scriptures tonight. In Jesus' name, to you belong all the praise, all the glory, and all of the honor. To you, Jesus, again, belongs all of the praise, all of the glory, all of the honor. If you're comfortable with it, will you take your neighbor by the hand just right there don't, and, and just pray over them real quickly. Pray over them that, that, that they would have a sensitive heart. A, a hearing ear to hear what the Lord has for them tonight. Pray over them. Every distraction be silenced tonight in the name of Jesus. Every hindrance be removed tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Speak to us, Lord. Plainly and clearly tonight in the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Give him one more clap. Amen, amen, amen. Well, well y'all sit down. I didn't say be seated. I'm not going to sit down for a while. I'm just kidding. You can be seated. You can be seated. I'm going to talk about that tonight. Now, I, can own, I told you last night, and I'm just... I'm just me, you know, I can only minister how God allows me to minister. I'm not, I, I can't try to be like somebody else. I can't try to do it like somebody else. I can only be me and minister how God has called me and anointed me to minister. I don't have a top five. I got a lot of messages on this iPad up here. I got a lot of teaching, a lot of messages, a lot of Bible studies. I got a lot of, I couldn't even tell you how many. There's just so many on here, but I don't have a top five. I don't have a top 10. Obviously, it's the same Bible. Look at this. It's the same Bible. It's the same scriptures that we're preaching from, that any preacher's going to preach from, any minister's going to minister from. It's the same scriptures. It's the same Bible. We can't, we can't do anything about that. So you'll hear familiar scriptures read. You know, you, we, if, you, if you get tired of singing the same song, we'll, we can, you can go write another song so we don't have to hear that same song again. But we can't write another Bible. We can't write another scripture. And so we keep, we keep preaching, yes, the same scripture. But I don't have a top ten messages that I say, well, this man, this really preached good over here at this church, so I'm going to try it here. This really preached good over there, so I'm going to try it here. I don't do that. I'm just, I'm, and I'm, I'm only doing this to explain something to you, right? I just, I do my best to pray, to fast, to seek the heart of God for a particular congregation, a particular group of people. What does the Father want to say to you? What does God want to say to you in this in this revival last night, tonight, and tomorrow? What's God's heart be for these services? That's what we seek after. That's what we want. And then when God begins to talk to me as a minister and deposit those things in my spirit, you know, I, I go to the scriptures, I search the scriptures, I type, I write things down, I, 
I, I take the notes and and even during services sometimes. I'm, let me listen to, talk to you young ministers that are here. Even during services sometimes, I, I'm, 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 my mind is, is in the worship and it is in the praise absolutely. And I'm listening and I'm paying attention. But the other part of my mind is feeling after the spirit. I'm listening to the voice of the Lord. And he might quicken something to me sitting over there. So I get my iPad and I write it down real quick. And I take it. I take note of it and and and. And so, therefore, that's you know, that's 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 how we that's how we minister, okay? Amen. So, I'm going to talk to you again tonight. Talk to you about what did we talked about last night. All right, I'm going to go back and preach what I preached last night because nobody <laughs> remembers what I talked about last night. So, you won't know if I preach the same message tonight that I preached last night because you don't know what I preached about last night. Oh, we'll know. <laughs> no, you won't. You can't even tell me what the title was. Tell me what the title was. The title was. You don't know either. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting on somebody to tell me. I don't know. What I'm looking at you. You weren't here. You're the only one that has an excuse. It's praying in the Holy Ghost, right? <laughs> praying in the Holy Ghost, right? We talked about the Holy Ghost. We talked about praying in the Holy Ghost. And so tonight we're going to talk about the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. No, we're not. We're going to talk about the Holy Ghost is a consuming fire. Amen. I know, I know, and this is going to this is going to sound like a dull moment because it's very obvious uh, uh, that people are just under attack right now yeah. in, in 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 life. People are just losing their minds, literally losing their minds uh, in the world right now. Well, and I and I and I can even go so far as to tell you that 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 people are under attack in. In the church, in Christianity, people in the church, in Christianity, are losing their minds. Even, yeah, even people that sit on church pews. Uh, my phone blows up constantly. Uh, my Facebook, my, my Messenger, all of those things blow up constantly with, with, with issues and problems and, and people in ministry and people in the church, uh, people that, that are Christians, people that love God. That are faithful to church, uh, and, and but they are literally under attack right now with all kinds of things. Uh, and my phone blows up so much, and I'm ministering so much, not just in locally, but there's several churches that I am a, I, I am a, a, a regular minister in their church. So I minister their leadership team. I minister to uh, uh, their their pastoral staff. So my, my phone is blowing up to the point that I almost don't even have time to focus on the world. And sinners because I'm so focused on the church. I'm so focused on the body. And that is what my ministry is more directed to. If you will look around this building tonight, I am not talking to a house full of sinners. I'm not talking to the lost. I'm not talking to a bunch of people that come in here that don't know anything about Acts 238, don't know anything about Jesus' name, baptism. I'm not talking to a bunch of people that you are novice and this is your first time to be in church and hear a message preached. And I'm not I'm not intimidated by that. I'm not worried about that. I my my ministry is predominantly to the body. It's predominantly to the church, to Christians. Uh, and, and that's that's the way God has directed me. I strengthen, I edify, I encourage the body. And there are other ministers that will come in who their calling is specifically for the lost. They are they reach the lost. They know how to bring them in. They know how to pray them through. All that's fine and good. The fivefold ministry, God is God designed. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher is for the perfecting of the saints. It's to grow and edify the church and the ministry. So I see people that are under attack, not 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 just I'm not talking about worldly people right now, even though they are. But I'm talking about uh, Christian people. And yes, there are there are phobias of all kinds. We talked about it a little bit last night. People are struggling with identity and it all starts right there. I've been preaching on an identity crisis for a long time, for years now. I've been preaching on an identity crisis, uh, uh, not in the world, but in the church, because that's where everything starts from. If we don't know who we are in Christ Jesus, then nothing, we won't understand anything else. We won't know how to operate any other way because everything flows from position. Everything launches from position. And when we are in correct position in Christ Jesus and we understand that position, then everything else flows freely from there. 
I've been preaching on that identity crisis a long time. I've been preaching on it and, and, and almost, almost, I don't, I don't know how long these things have been out exactly, but I've been preaching on that identity crisis uh, way before or, or, or at least a little bit before I, I started seeing it begin to manifest itself. Uh, don't throw me under the bus here for what I'm about to say. I'm going to get back to the good notes in just a minute. Don't throw me under the bus here for what I'm about to say. I, I began to preach on identity crisis before I began to notice a disturbing trend among us as Christians with our with our, um, our our Facebook apps, our Instagram, our Snapchat, all of those things where we can take pictures of ourselves and post them on social media and they look absolutely nothing like what we really look like in person. We, we want to add something to it, the twinkles, the stars, the ears, uh, the dog tongue, whatever, whatever, whatever. I, mean, I, I, I know people that don't need to add no long tongue to it. I better not touch that. I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna leave that alone. But we, we make it up. We take all the wrinkles out. We take all of that out. And you you can look you can you can look at people on it. You can look at people on Facebook. And oh wait a minute now. I know good and well. I just saw you a few days ago. I know good and well that you don't look nothing like this picture you put here on Facebook. But it, it, and I saw that I saw that I, I, I got and, and you know it's laughable and we laugh about it. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. But I said to myself, I said, I don't know how to put my finger on this, but there's something very disturbing about this. When we can when we can be so dissatisfied with the way that we look, uh, that we're going to do everything we can to, to change it with these apps before we post it on social media because we want people to accept the way that we look. We don't like who we are. We don't like what we look like. We don't like our identity. So we're going to change it and project ourselves as something else on social media to make people like us and accept us, right? I'm sitting in a restaurant. You walk back. You, you, if you've heard me preach much, you might you might have heard me tell this story. But I was in a revival, and we went to a Chili's after service on a Friday night or a Saturday night. And we are we, they, they take us in there. I'm there with a bunch of with a with a pastor and a bunch of the saints and some young people. And and they, they set us on these those high tables with the high benches. And I'm sitting there right over. There's a banister there, but right over in the the banister, there's some booths. And there's some other kids sitting there, some young people sitting there, not from the church. You can tell uh, by their outward dress they had absolutely nothing to do with Christianity or the church as far as I can tell. But this one girl was taking pictures. She was doing, she was on Snapchat, so she was taking pictures, you know. Doing all that stuff and then adding all the effects to it. And I can see, I'm sitting right here, her phone. I can see her phone and, and, and I can see the pictures that she's taking and sending. And I see, I already seen her face. And I started praying for whoever she was sending the pictures to. I said, God, man, if you don't know what she really looks like, you're going to be in a shock and a surprise if you ever see her in person. Because she does not look anything like what she is sending you right now. We don't like ourselves. We, it's an identity problem. And we got too many Christians right now living for God that don't like themselves, don't like the way they look, don't like the way they feel, don't like. And it, and it, and it all, it all have, yes, it does have roots in our past, uh, roots how we were brought up, roots how we were raised, uh, roots of the things that we've been through, the things that we were told, you're no good, uh, you're worthless, wish you had never been born, abusive relationships, abusive marriages, uh, and, and, and we carry those things things into our Christian life and our Christian walk with God and then we struggle with Him for, for years and years and years as we're trying to live for God. Yes. People are under attack. Society, is, as Bishop Pastor already mentioned it, uh, and he's going to have to get used to that name being called Bishop. As he already mentioned it, and I mentioned it last night, society is questioning at every turn our gender and our masculinity and our sexuality. Society is questioning that. It, it, it is in politics. It is in, in, in sports. It is in entertainment industry. And they are, very, they are attacking these children as young as this age right here, questioning their gender and challenging them that they can question their gender as well. I've n I don't know that I've ever seen it before that depression and fear and anxiety and stress and worry are at an all-time high right now in our country. And again, I've got to say within Christianity, but listen to me, I want to I, I, I help us understand this, but these things are at an all-time high. 
I'm going to say them again. Depression and fear and anxiety, stress and worry are in an all-time high even among Christians right now. Brothers and sisters, we are desperately, and, and, and this is going to be a bold statement, but let me go ahead and say it. We are desperately in need of some substantial evidence as to the power of this life-changing gospel that we preach. We need some, some substantial evidence that what we preach is really real. It is a poor, listen to me now, it is a poor testimony of a God that can save some somebody's soul, but it can't deliver their mind, and it can't deliver them from fear, and it can't deliver them from depression, and it can't deliver them from stress and from worry. It's a poor testimony for us to try to convince the world that God can save their soul, but, but can't heal our mind. I'm not making light of any situation or circumstance that anyone is going through tonight. I'm not, I'm not making light of, 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 of trauma that you may be dealing with or facing. I'm not making light of anything. If you're struggling with depression or anger or fear or anxiety or any of those things, I would never make light of those things. Those things are real and, and, people, and we do go through those things. People do go through those things. But we cannot just sit back. We, the church, the ecclesia cannot just sit back with our hands full and keep our mouths shut because we know the answer. We have the answer and we know what the answer is. Come on, brothers and sisters. Y'all gonna have to help me preach tonight now, because you can, you can name it. You can name it right now if you want to name it. You can throw out there to me whatever spirit you want to throw out there. The spirit of heaviness. The spirit of depression. The spirit of oppression. The spirit of infirmity. The spirit of fear. The spirit of bondage. The spirit of of perversion that is so rampant in our world right now. You can throw any of that out there you want to me right now. And I'm still going to come back to you with, yes, it's true. Greater is he that is in me than all of these things that you can possibly throw at me right now. The spirit of God, the spirit of wholeness, the spirit of peace, the spirit of holiness, the spirit of righteousness that lives on the inside of me is greater than anything that I just mentioned to you right there. You want to give the Lord a clap offering for that? Holy Ghost power is still transforming power. Somebody say amen to that right there. Amen. Holy Ghost power is still life-changing power. It's still soul-saving power. It's still mind-changing power. It's still body-healing power. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. That's the power of the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters. And people in this room right now, I don't know if you understand this. You should understand this. But I don't know if you do understand this. If you've been born of the water and the spirit, what actually lives on the inside of you is the Holy Holy Spirit. It's fire. It's a holy fire. And John said, he that comes after me is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost fire. Somebody say it's holy fire. Holy it fire. is holy fire. It is the same fire. It's the same fire that led Israel in the Exodus that troubled the Egyptians. I love that story. You need to go read that story sometime in Exodus 14. You need to go read it. <laughs> It, it, is, it is so cool to read this. The, 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 the children of Israel are, 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 are getting ready to cross the Red Sea and God puts a fire between them and the Egyptians and the Bible says that God looked through the fire at the Egyptians and said this is as far as you can go and in the middle of the night, go read this, in the middle of the night, the Spirit of God took the wheels, the wheel nuts off of the chariots of the Egyptians' chariots. He took the wheel nuts off of it. So the next day when they started trying to pursue, the wheel fell off because God put a fire between them. So this is for you. It's the same fire that fell for the prophet Elijah who, who poured all that water on that altar, marked the prophets of Baal, poured all that water on that altar and said, let the God that be God answer by fire. And the fire of God came down and licked up that altar, licked up all the water, consumed the whole thing. That's the same fire that fell in Acts chapter 2. That's the same fire that fell in Acts 2. It's the fire of God. It's holy anointing. Fire. It 
is not a quick fix, brothers and sisters. It is not a quick fix. It's not chill bumps. It's not just get me by another day. It is the spirit of the living God living on the inside of you. It is the anointing that destroys the yoke living on the inside of you. Can I say that one more time? It ain't just chill bumps. It ain't just, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. It ain't just give me by another day. It ain't just something to help me hang in there. It is the Spirit of Almighty God living on the inside of you. It is the yoke destroying power of God living on the. Yeah. Our God is a consuming fire, the text says. The passage says God is a holy devouring fire. God will not accept a sacrifice that he's not allowed to consume all of it. He doesn't accept a partial sacrifice, a half sacrifice. I'm going to give you part, God. I'm going to hold on to part. I'm going to give you part. Mm -hmm. God will only consume a, a whole sacrifice. All that he's allowed to consume, a sacrifice that he's allowed to consume at all, that's what he will do. Our God is a consuming fire, a devouring fire. Don't forget that right there. The, our, this, this fire is not a, a, a safe fire to be around. This is a dangerous fire fire to be around. When the Holy Ghost starts moving in a service, it is a very dangerous place to be. Woo! For certain things, I'm going to explain that to you right now. Number one, this fire is not safe for the devil because the devil can't touch this fire. The devil can't handle this fire. I get it, 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 it's on my nerves. I don't get mad at it now. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, 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 kind of step on some of our toes. Maybe y'all don't do it here, but way too many of us Christians do it. But oh, the devil is just all over me. The devil's on my trail. That all hell's breaking loose against me. All hell's coming against me. And I'll be thinking, well, listen, 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 listen. The fire that's in you is greater than any fire the devil could ever bring out of hell. And if all hell's against you. What you got to remember is all heaven is for you. All heaven is with you. All heaven is for you. The fire that's in you is greater than anything that can come out of hell. Give the Lord a clap offering right there. This fire is not safe. It is a very dangerous place to be. And when the Holy Ghost fire starts flowing, it is a very dangerous service to be in. Because this fire is not safe for sin. Because this fire is holy fire. And this holy fire will bring conviction. That's why you see people. That's why when the Holy Ghost starts moving, the fire starts burning. That's why you people see people getting up so much and walking out going to the bathroom. It, it ain't because they got to go pee so much. It's because it's getting hot in here. It's getting hot in here. It's getting hot in my spirit. God's working on me about this addiction. God's working on me about this situation I've got in my life. Fire is, this fire is not safe for sin because this is a holy fire. This holy fire will burn off carnal appendages that have attached themselves to you. This holy fire will destroy carnality. This holy fire will demand spirituality to rise up with this fire. Fires, this holy fire starts burning. It stirs up holiness. It stirs up a desire. Oh, because it is literally the spirit of holiness. This fire is pure fire. This fire is a taintless fire. This fire is without trace of corruption. This fire is without a trace of uncleanness. This fire is the purity of God. And where is the purity of God? It is living on the inside of us right now. Where is the spirit of holiness living? He is living on the inside of us right now. 
isn't that something? Isn't that something? See, 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 we 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 have we have literally the spirit of holiness living on the inside of us right now. We have this holy fire living on the inside of us right now. But most of us, after we became saved, after we're saved, after we're filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, we are raised in a in a religious culture with a religious mindset that's constantly telling us you're just a sinner saved by grace. You're barely hanging in there. God barely even likes you. God barely even can stand to look at you. He can only look at you with one eye open. Because if he looked at you with both eyes open, he'd kill you. And then we grow, we, we, we're trained to think that you're just a sinner. You're going to fail every day. You're going to make mistakes every day. It ain't no wonder we're... It ain't no wonder too many of us are stumbling and fumbling and fumbling all over ourselves. Can't decide whether we're in the world or in the church because if, if we, and that's what we hear preach to us all the time. You're just you're, you're a sinner saved by grace. You're barely hanging in there. You don't deserve none of this anyway. You're going to fail every day anyway. What do you expect's going to be going to build up in our minds and in our spirits? But oh, if we're taught that the spirit of holiness lives on the inside of you, that you are God's treasure chest, that it's His spirit that lives in you, that you are precious, that you are valuable to the kingdom of this fire is a defense it's a means of protection it was a means of protection in the old testament it's a means of protection in the new testament god hasn't changed oh my god those chariots, those horsemen of fire that, that the prophet saw in the Old Testament guarding the man of God. You've got that same fire in you now, on you now, surrounding you now. You have been baptized in that Holy Ghost fire. I wish somebody would say thank you, Jesus, for that right there. This fire is communicative. It spreads. When you're on fire, it's going to spread. When fire sets on fire, if you're cold, if you're not, if you're cold, oh, I heard that word, Lord, so I'm going to go and say it. If you're cold, if you're lukewarm, that turns people off. That turns people away. Nobody's interested in a cold church. Nobody's interested in a lukewarm church or a lukewarm, cold Christian. We talked about the murmuring and the complaining last night. We don't want to get to that. But there's nothing, since y'all don't remember what I preached, let me go and handle it right here. There's nothing worse than a lukewarm, complaining, murmuring, cold Christian. Man, people will go around the block to get away from you. They're gonna go, they're gonna go, they'll go, they'll go, they'll go. They'll walk somewhere totally away. Oh Lord Jesus, here comes. Again. 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 <laughs> Again. Woo! Here they come again. Woo! I'm going the other way, praise God. But fire is what spreads. Fire is communicative. It spreads. Fire sets fire. Somebody say, we've got to start a fire out here. We've got to get this wood burning. Anybody, what do they say? Anybody got a piece of ice? Anybody got some ice to go? They say, anybody got a match? Anybody got a lighter? Anybody got some flame? We got a strike. We got to get a spark going here because it's fire that sets fire. Do you know where the fire of God is right now? The fire of God is not going to fall in this building tonight. It has already fallen. It fell in Acts chapter 2. Where is it living tonight? It's living on the inside of you and I. And the only way this fire is going to move tonight is when you and I move. Yes. Y'all tracking with me tonight? Yes. This fire it spreads, it spreads, it spreads. You get this fire stirred up and it will spread. This fire is dangerous. This fire is dangerous uh, 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 for, for disunity. This fire spreads and it's dangerous for disunity. It's dangerous for division because when this fire starts spreading, it spreads into one mind and one accord. It spreads into brother lifting up brother, brother pushing brother, brother encouraging brother. When you, you show me a red hot fiery church and I'll show you a church that's unified I'll show you a church that's building each other up constantly I'll show you a church that's walking lockstep arm in arm for the glory of God because that's what this fire does this fire is not safe 
This fire is not safe. The fire that you have living on the inside of you is not safe. Listen to me now. This is where I started, so let me take care of it right now. It's not safe for depression. It's not safe for worry. It's not safe for anxiety. It's not safe. This fire is not safe for any other disorder that you may be going through and that you may be dealing with. This fire is not safe for those disorders. Oh, I'm going to prove it to you in Scripture. I'm not just going to tell you that. I'm going to give you a Bible for it. This fire is not safe for whatever phobia, whatever disorder that you may be dealing with or going through. And we, are, we, 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 we have gotten to the place now. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me to be good tonight. Help me to be good tonight. They won't matter. They won't be tomorrow when I preach tonight. <laughs> I'm going to use that against y'all so bad now. Y'all should have, somebody should have, somebody should have cheated and took up notes and wrote it. I, you you would have got me on that now. Uh-uh, no more, no chance. No, y'all wouldn't give me no chance. She was already trying to blame it on me. <laughs> We have, we have gotten to the place now where, where way too many re, re, religious communities are beginning to accept and magnify disorders. Whatever, whatever, whatever that disorder may be. We really love this one, OCD. Don't, don't say anything, just hush, please. Don't, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not trying to be offensive to anything or anybody. No, no one. But it sounds, it sounds polite. When you, and it sounds good when you say OCD. It don't sound like it's anything wrong. You're yeah, I'm OCD. I'm OCD. That is obsessive compulsive disorder. That is a disorder that controls some area of your life. It literally has you in bondage. It is no different than post-traumatic stress disorder. That somebody carries and deals with because of something that they, some kind of tragic situation that they've been in their life. And something flares up and triggers, it triggers panic and chaos and fear in them and depression in them because it is post-traumatic stress disorder. It is a disorder. Let me tell you something. Jesus Christ did not go to that cross and suffer what he suffered for you and I to have to put up with any kind of disorder in this life. He came to set us free from any kind of disorder that would be plaguing us. This this Holy Ghost, this Holy Ghost fire is not safe for depression, worry, anxiety, or any other disorder because this fire is the comforter. This fire is the comforter from God. It is, oh my God, it is not to comfort you in your disorder, it's to comfort you from it, to bring you out of it, to, to give you something to replace that situation. That's what the Holy Ghost is. When you surrender, when you surrender to this fire, it will consume the stress. It will, when you completely surrender. Yes. You've got to hear me now, because God is not going to consume a partial sacrifice. Why can't I get deliverance from this? Why can't I get deliverance from this? Why can't I get deliverance from this? Because you haven't done what God told you to do. You haven't released it. You haven't let go of it. You haven't forgiven it. Oh, God will take this. Listen, now listen, I'm just, I'm just going to help you here. Well, God will take that. No, God will not take anything that you and I won't give him. The only time he takes it is when we release it, when we give it. That's why someone can't get the Holy Ghost with their mouth shut. They gotta open their mouth. They gotta speak. They gotta repent first. They gotta repent of their sins first. They gotta repent first. If they don't repent, you can go 100 miles an hour, but you're going in the wrong direction. Y'all tracking with me this today, right? God will not, he will not take what you and I won't give him. Oh, God's got this, God's got this, God's got this. If, you're, if you and I are still worrying about it and stressing over it and losing sleep over it, God ain't got it because we've not given it to him. Because when we give it to God, this fire will consume it. When you surrender it to God, that stress, that anger, that addiction, that worry, that phobia, that whatever, when you surrender it to God, he will consume it because, listen, because this fire is the spirit of God. This Holy Ghost fire is the Spirit of God and the Spirit of God. Listen to me. I just read you all that other stuff. But hear what, hear what the Spirit of God is. The Spirit of God is love. 
joy, yes. peace, yes. long suffering, yes. gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Yes. That's where that is the Spirit of God. And every bit of that fruit lives on the inside of you right now. You don't have to pray for love. You ain't got to pray for joy. You ain't got to pray for peace. You ain't got to pray for long suffering. You ain't got to pray for gentleness. You ain't got to pray for goodness. You ain't got to pray for faith. You ain't got to pray for meekness. You ain't got to pray for temperance. You don't have to pray and ask for things that you already possess. You just got to learn how to yield to those things and let them begin to flow out of you and operate out of you as the situation calls them. This fire, this fire, this fire. When you surrender everything to this devouring fire, this consuming fire, this fire will consume all of that. The anger, the depression, the worry, disorder, it will consume it. And the Spirit of God will release into your spirit yeah. these things I just read to you. Right. Give me that phone, I'll answer it. <laughs> my daughter. Yeah, tell her I want to talk to her. She calls back here near church again. <laughs> the love, thank you, the joy, the peace, the long suffering, the gentleness, the goodness, the faith, the meekness, the temperance. Please don't let me hurt your feelings tonight. I know, I know, I know certain things that I touch and tag in when I'm talking to Christian people, church people. Listen, I pastored for 14 years, and we had three works. We had three works in a triangle area. I pastored for 14 years, being my best friend. So I know a little bit what I'm talking about. I haven't, I haven't been evangelizing all. I've been evangelizing for about 11 years now, full time. But a pastor for 14 years before that, three different works. I was, a, I was a assistant. I was the district superintendent of the West Texas New Mexico district and plus Arizona for two terms. So I know a little bit about what I'm talking about when it comes to us. When it comes to us. And I've heard all the testimonies. Just okay. Nobody, amen. Everybody, just listen. I'm not I'm going to close my eyes when I say it. I've heard all the testimonies about it. I'm going to tell you one thing. Don't ever pray for patience. My God, you pray for patience and God's going to jerk the rug out. Man. You, you pray for patience and all hell's going to break loose against you. I'll tell you what, I ain't never prayed for patience again. I'll tell you what. <laughs> y'all laugh because y'all know I'm telling the, the blessed truth right now. Why are you praying for what you already possess, what you already have? The problem is we don't know that we already possess that. We think it's something out of our reach. We can never possess that. We can never obtain that. We can never be long-suffering. We can never walk in that kind of love. We can never have that kind of faith or that kind of gentleness or that kind of goodness. Yes, you can. You have, if you have the Holy Ghost, you have those things living on the inside of you right now. And all of that nature, that's the nature of God. All of that nature wants to consume all of that other stuff that you brought out of your Adamic nature. All that fear, all that depression, that worry, that anxiety, the fear, all of that stuff comes from the Adamic nature. When you're born again, you've got a DNA shift. I ain't got time to go into all that. You've got a DNA shift. Your DNA changes. Your nature changes. And now your God nature can come out of you. I'm going to read it again. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. When we are filled, when we are filled and controlled by the Holy Ghost, we don't have an excuse for allowing these things to rule and dominate in our lives. When we are filled and controlled by the Holy Ghost, we do not have an excuse to allow these things to rule and control in our lives. He, he shall baptize you. He shall baptize you. Baptize you. Submerge you. Endo you. Clothe you with the Holy Ghost fire. That's the anointing that destroys the yoke. We talk about the anointing all the time, and most of the time we don't even know what we're talking about. I tell preachers all the time, and I tell singers, and I tell musicians all the time, if you're Holy Ghost filled, you never, it is, it, is a, it is a wrong prayer for you to ask God, anoint me, Lord, anoint me, Lord. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you're already anointed. Lord, help me to flow freely in the, the anointing. Help me to flow freely in this anointing. That's what you can pray. 
I want to flow freely, Father. I don't want to be, I don't want to be distracted by anything. I want to flow freely in this anointing. You're already anointed. If you have the Holy Ghost, you're already anointed. Well, how do I, I don't feel it. I don't feel. That's our problem. That's our problem. Everything is emotionally. Our 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 new birth was so radical when we were born again as Christians. It's, you know, you, you a, a, a natural birth. Any of you women ever have been born again? It is so brutally hard on the husbands. And, and y'all just lay there. Y'all just lay there. Just, but man, we're struggling. <laughs> finally got some of y'all paying attention. Look at all these girls. They finally paying attention over here. They hadn't been listening the whole time. Y'all been listening to them. What? Oh, you have a okay. Check it. In reality, you look you look at a natural birth, man. That's every emotion from A to Z, from Z to A, all the way back in between. There's laughing, there's crying, there's falling, there's screaming, there's there's all that stuff. Because it's such a it is such a traumatic emotional thing. It is the same thing in a in a spiritual birth. When a new convert is up here, when, when someone is seeking the Holy Ghost, the mother, the church, uh, there's in the church, there's laughing, there's crying, and people are screaming, people are dancing, people are running, there's people laying on the floor, the music is banging, the new birth is such an emotional thing. When that when that child comes out in the natural, it, it is silence, everybody's listening, everybody's listening, the mother's listening, the daddy's listening, they want to hear the doctor smack the backside uh, so that air uh, oxygen enters into those lungs and that baby uh, gives out a, gives out a cry and when that cry comes out everybody starts laughing here comes the laughter the tears again because the baby is letting them know it's alive it's been born the same way in an altar with a new convert we're listening for a sound we're listening for a heavenly language and when the spirit of God feels them out of them comes another tongue it's a very emotionally intense thing and so from that point on, everything about us has got to be mostly charged. Yeah. And if I don't, ooh, if I'm not doing all that, ooh, then I'm not anointed. If I'm not feeling chill bumps, if I'm not feeling run up down my legs doing it, ooh, ooh, then I'm not anointed. We think we got to work it up. We convinced ourselves we got to work it up. Come on, we gotta get that song. You gotta, you gotta stop. You gotta play faster. Play a little bit faster. Beat them drums a little bit louder. Somebody jump up down five times. Somebody yell how to lose 16 times. Somebody run around this church real fast. We gotta get this thing stirred up. That's a mindset we've created. Yeah. And we call it. Well, y'all gonna get mad at me now. I got one more day. Y'all don't gonna remember anything. You ain't seen that too Drive it in there. Drive it in there. I'm in the service preaching here a while back, and the Lord just kind of slapped me upside the back of the head with this. Some of our services remind me of the prophets of Baal. The prophets of Baal were screaming and hollering and even cutting themselves, trying to get their God to come down here and show up and do something. We do, we do this, we don't cut ourselves, but we clap, we run, we jump, we scream, we holler, we yell, we do all of those things, we bang the piano, and then somebody will finally run around the church, somebody will finally jump up and down, and you know what we'll do when we get through with all that emotional stuff, we'll all settle in and we'll say, oh boy, how did we have a good service tonight, we had a great move of God tonight, God really moved tonight, did God really move, did God really move, did anybody go home sick? Did anybody go home still broken? Did anybody go home still carrying stuff? Come on. Yeah. I don't want to make you think now. I don't want to make you think too much. I don't want to break your thinker. <laughs> but if we got up walking in the anointing, we know we, we live in the anointing. We live in the anointing. You live in the anointing. The anointing lives in you. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. You don't need no feeling to know you're walking in the anointing. If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, the anointing is in you right now. Hallelujah. You can pray the prayer of faith right now. You can send the word of healing right now. You can minister right now. You don't need to work up your chill bumps. If you've been walking in the spirit all day long, you can minister to somebody at this very moment right now. The Holy Ghost eliminates. The anointing eliminates. It eliminates excuses that I can't do it. I, I just can't do it. The Holy Ghost will eliminate that. Holy Ghost eliminates uh, the complaint that I just don't understand. I don't know what to do. The Holy Ghost eliminates that. When we are filled and controlled uh, by the Holy Ghost, it will eliminate anything that keeps us from being uh, who we are supposed to be in Christ. Uh, and it will eliminate anything that keeps us from doing what we are supposed to be doing in Christ. Uh, that's the Holy Ghost. Yes. Who 
somebody, and I'm almost done. Somebody texted me the other day. He said, "Man, brother Flair, we we I'm really, we're really going through this, this, and this." And and, and they and they quoted one. Of, they, they they typed in there one of our favorite scriptures, the Old, Old Testament scriptures uh, that we like to use as people, especially when we when we are 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 uh, when we perceive or we have the mind or we're thinking that. Uh, here we go again, all hell's breaking loose against us or whatever the devil's really attacking, blah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. They, so they said, this, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. I believe that's in Jeremiah. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. I texted him back and I said, the Spirit the Spirit of the Lord has already lifted up a standard against him. And it's you, the church. You are the standard that God has lifted up. You are the anointing that God has lifted up against that situation. Now you need to begin to tell that Spirit that that's attacking you what to do. You need to rebuke it. You need to bind it. You need to take authority over it in the name of Jesus. It ain't by your might. It ain't by your power. It is by the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside. Stand to your feet with me, please, and give the Lord a great big clap offering right now. Give the Lord a great big clap offering right now. We're going to pray for us again tonight in a few minutes. We're going to pray for us again tonight in a few minutes. Anybody that wants it, anybody that wants it, we're, we're going to pray for you. If you don't want it, we're going to pray for you in double, so you better want it. I want to stir something up in you tonight. I want to stir something up in you tonight. Don't be mad at me now. Don't be mad at me, but you, you have, you have, well, let me just be nice. Let me just say it nice. I'm going to say it nice. Can I say it nice? Right. You're dumber than a box of rocks. That's the nice way. If you think God miraculously blessed y'all right down to the very second with this property, just for y'all to sit over here and just do nothing with it and accomplish nothing with it, you have lost your mind. But God's got purpose all over this place. God's got design all over this house and all over this place. God's got a work to be done here. God wants to fill this place up to full and overflowing. There are too many lost souls and too many broken people in this whole entire area right here. Yes. 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 And the right, and God's got the right people at the right time, at the right moment to get the job done. You don't have to wait on anybody else. You don't have to wait on anybody else. You don't have to wait on anybody else. You don't have to wait on the half-hearted to get in here and get dedicated and get committed. Look at these young couples up here right now. We're, 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 there's two right there. Right, y'all fixing to get hitched? Yes, sir. Why is she standing so far away from you? You forget the owner or something? What? What? You changing your mind? No, no, sir. I didn't ask you. I asked her. I'm just messing with you. Yes, sir. Where's the other dude that was up here signing? Something I was a boyfriend and something, something I was bugging or something, something. Look at him. Look at where's his wife. Look at her. Look at these young couples. Look at these young couples. Yeah. That's where we're going to start. Y'all come up here. You young couples come up here. You young couples come up here. Y'all fixing to get married, right? Just give, stand back. Give me some room. I'm coming down there. Start right here. We're gonna start right here. You all right? Huh? Yeah. You got the Holy Ghost, right? You got the Holy Ghost. Y'all got the Holy Ghost. That's all we need. Uh, his wife. Ah. His wife. That's fine. Come here, here, brother. Come here. Yes, sir. You and your wife. You're in leadership. I know what's. I don't know if it was announced what's going to happen soon, but I know what's going to happen.